Hi everybody, welcome to this introduction to databases course. Today we're going to have a quick look at queries. The scenario that we're going to start with is um, a social networking site called Hippopotamus um, allows uh, individuals to sign up and create an account. All they have to do on their computer is fill out um, a data entry form. So let's fill out the form. Um, just put some random data in here. Uh, my favorite fruit is, uh, let's say it's orange. Okay, so when I click create account on my computer, this data is going to be sent to the hippopotamus server, okay, and stored in a database table. Okay, so let's create the account and let's go and have a look at the, the database table on the server at hippopotamus.com. And as you can see, we have one record of data available. I'm imagining that this field, the ID field, is probably the primary key. Let's um, quickly populate the table just with some more records. Yep. Okay. All right. So it looks like the ID field is indeed the primary key. It's the field that makes every record in the table unique. Now, with database tables, it's often um, handy to ask questions to the table. For example, hey table, please show me all of the records where the favorite fruit is orange. Now in a small table of data, it's easy for me to go and identify those records. But with tables with many, many, many records, that it becomes more challenging. So what we can do is build queries, okay? And we can ask the database table, hey database, tab <laughs> database table, please show me all records where the favorite fruit is orange. This is the thing that we're, we're using um, to filter the database table. This is known as the criteria. Okay, we're looking for all records where the favorite fruit is orange. So let's run the query and we can see there are two records where the favorite fruit is orange. The question is, how can we design queries using database technology? Well, a very common answer to that question is to use a language called SQL. SQL is a standard language for storing, manipulating and retrieving data in databases. Yay, that's exactly what we're looking for. And here is an example of SQL. What it means is select everything from this table. Okay, so let's try it. Here we've got a database. There's lots of tables. I'm going to go into the orders table. There are 196 records and there are one, two, three, four, five fields. Okay, so at the moment we have selected everything from the orders table. Let's select the customer ID field from the orders table. Oh, there you go. We've selected the customer ID field from the orders table. Let's just bring everything back. Maybe I'll just click that again. Okay. Let's select uh, everything from the orders table where um, the shipper ID is the same as one. So we're going to look at all records from the orders table where the shipper ID is one. So let's run it. Apparently there are 54 records in the table where the shipper ID is one. Okay. And we'll just do uh, one more thing before we get into ZAMP. Um, I'm going to select the order ID field. So you need to make sure you spell it correctly and you capitalize when it's when necessary. Um, SQL um, is case sensitive. I'm going to select the order ID and the customer ID from the orders where the shipper ID, this is the criteria, this is the thing that I'm looking for, the shipper ID, um, let's say is less than three. So we're going to look for shipper ID one and shipper ID two. Okay, so there we go. We've selected the order ID field and the customer ID field from the orders table where 
the shipper ID is less than three. All right, with these ideas, let's get into um, XAMPP. What we're going to be doing is downloading um, a data file and importing it into XAMPP to help us create a database table. You've guessed it, this is a CSV file and it's related to game industry data. So let's have a look at this. Oh, there it is. I've already downloaded it. I've saved it in a project folder, very organized. This is the file. And if we take a quick look at it, there are loads of records. The first row does contain the field names. That's important to remember. And if I look quickly, Mm, just using my experience, I don't think there's a primary key field here. There's no field which is going to make every record unique. So we need to think about that as well. Let's get into XAMPP. Just going to make sure my servers are running. Yes, okay. Let's connect to the server. Localhost. And we're going to jump into the databases uh, area. This was a database that I was working on earlier. By the way, you can select a database and if you want to, you can go into operations and um, get rid of it. If you don't want, if you've finished with it and you don't want it anymore, you can drop it. So let's drop that database. I'm going to create a new database called, this is game, I'm going to call it game data, my game data database. Okay, so let's create it and instead of, um, designing it here, I'm simply going to import a CSV file. The file that I'm going to um, choose was that IGN data file that I downloaded. There it is. Um, I don't think I need to make any changes here, but I have to remember that the first line um, contains the field names. So let's import it. Whoa, we got it. Okay, it's just going to click on that. And here we go. This is all the data. I don't think there's any field here that I can use as a primary key. I could go into structure and um, let's say that the score phrase was going to be the primary key field. I could um, change that and make it the primary key field. Can I remember how to do that? Ugh. I can't remember how to do it. and I'm not going to waste time doing this at the moment. Let's, just, let's get out of that. I'm just going to go back to structure. What I am going to do is add one column at the beginning of the table, which I'm going to call game ID. This is going to be my primary key field. And I want it to auto increment and it is going to be my primary key field. Okay, so let's save that. And if we go back to browse the records, brilliant. We've got this field, which makes every record unique. That's exactly what we need. Now then, let's look at some SQL. Ooh. So it gives us a starter. Okay. Apparently, we have to put the name of the table, which is my IGN data table, in quotation marks. That's interesting. Because when we looked at the SQL here, it, it didn't put it in quotation marks. So there's one difference. That's interesting. Now then, these are the fields in my table. So let's select everything from IGN data where the score field doesn't equal zero. Let's just run that and see what happens. Um, how do we run it? Uh, do we click? I think we click go. Whoa. Okay. So there are 577 records in the database table where the score doesn't equal zero. Let's just go back again. Select everything from IGN data where the score is less than five. I wonder how many records have a score of less than five. I think we should put a semicolon at the end, but I'm not sure about that. Let's let's see what happens. Yay, okay, so there are 86 of the games in the database table have a score which is less than five. Okay, I'm just gonna do one more. I'm gonna select 
um, the game ID. I'm just going to select the game ID field from this table where the score is less than 5. Okay, so let's run that. And there we go. We get the, just the game ID field. So there's a very brief introduction to SQL.